The idea of actually having to change anything feels absolutely crazy. These are not easy cars to drive. Too much, too much, ah! Uh-oh. Hello and welcome to the headquarters of the ERT Formula E team. I'm Sauna CB and over the next few episodes, we're gonna be taking a deeper look than ever before at some of the key characteristics of developing performance in Formula E. From hardware to software to simulators and everything in between, usually these are areas that are pretty secretive. Teams don't necessarily wanna give you the access, but ERT have done exactly that. And we're gonna start with one of, if not the most important part of a Formula E car, the steering wheel. And I know what you're thinking, it's not just because it turns the car left and right, there is so much more to it, and today we're gonna to find out exactly how much. So, Dan, let's talk steering wheels. Because with season 10, we have a new one. This is the old one. This is the new one. I can see some visual differences, but you know, talk me through them. What are we looking at here? So, obviously the main visual difference is the screen is obviously higher. You've got this massive rotary down here, which I nicknamed the Art Reactor because it lights up <laughs> and it just reminds me of Iron Man. We obviously don't, we don't have these rotary things here, but we have an extra rotary here. I'm seeing a lot of different buttons and a lot of different dials. Yes. Let's just say, I'm gonna hold it up. Just give me a quick overview yeah. of the whole wheel. What does this do? Well, that's the radio button. That's the one that gets me into trouble. <laughs> so We should I, call this the Ticton button. Yeah. I shouldn't press that as much as I do, maybe. Um, but yeah. They like a crash, those Maseratis, don't they? Attack mode, important. Yeah, that is an important one, yeah. What's the X? That's, so if you've got a problem that's occurring, I'll click that and then it'll highlight in the data where that thing's happened. So they can just jump to the thing I'm on about. So it looks like there's three main parameters that Dan's changing using the wheel. That is the balance, the brake balance between the, the front and the rear, and then you've got engine braking and agility. All of them kind of in the same objective of improving the stability going through corners, keeping the, the speed up so he can basically maximise time on the circuit. The red ones here, which we had on the previous steering wheel as well, these are normally for performance related stuff. So uh, the big ones are on the sort of the first three. Um, so brake balance, engine braking, and what we call agility, which can make the car more stable on entry. And uh, but there's among other things, but the primary ones are on the first few. The green one, again, similar to here, uh, is more for strategy, um, race scenarios, like changing your, your lap offset. It's definitely worth remembering that every single micro change that Dan's making now, at least three taps of the wheel, paddles, buttons, wheels and everything, to make that change, is a considered thought whilst he's still going around the circuit, whilst taking it corner by corner, speeds of 100, 150 plus, and yet he's got enough brain cognitive power to think ahead, I'm going to need a bit more brake balance in the next corner, d -d 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 -d, change it, and then be ready to hit the corner perfectly. I mean, that is no easy task. a lot of changes happening on the wheel right now. It, all the information is there on the dash as well. So not only are you trying to drive the circuit, not only are you using the steering wheel to make the changes, but you're also referencing the changes that you've made on the dash. So you know where you are, you know what you need to do to make it better or most, more suitable. There's so much to think about. A lot of those things you're changing might change what you're reading on the screen, but I wouldn't necessarily understand what, what's being shown. No, I mean, well, me neither, to be honest. So <laughs> teams have codes for, for all sorts, like different teams do it differently. And every lap, you know, you need to read that code to your engineer. Two zero, Charlie, nine, Charlie. Because that tells them a whole variety of things, not just consumption, but, you know, temperatures of the motors, uh, all sorts. How are you um, reading that while racing? And you've also got to know the phonetic alphabet as well, because if you're not very good at that, the engineers want you to read it. <laughs> what I'm guessing is that there are a lot of subtle changes you can make from the steering wheel 
all of which might add up to quite a lot of different yeah, soundtracks. Yeah, and, and how they work with each other. I mean, if you think these rotaries have got, you know, 10 positions and within them they could have 10 or more. So the amount of combinations between them both is enormous. So it's safe, to, well, it's very safe to say that even though this is very mechanical and a very physical thing, all of these are controlling software yep. and control systems. And that's yep. what's really unique about Formula E. It's not all mechanical, is it? No, I, absolutely. Like the mechanical, I, I still think like the mechanical balance of the car is the most important thing. Nine times out of 10, the team have normally got everything in a good window mechanically and from a software perspective. You just use this, the, the, the software to sort of like top it up and dial it in basically. I'll tell you what, watching on boards is now a completely different experience. Yeah. Because we're going to be watching what you guys are doing every, every single lap. He's using that dial on the, the left, the red one, to change the screen. You can even hear him using the paddles, which is basically just going up and down within those settings. These are not easy cars to drive in the slightest. So just the idea of thinking of all these little changes he's making, almost corner to corner, yet still keeping it in a straight line and, and being on the racing line and everything. Yeah, it doesn't look easy. Still making me very anxious about having a go. <laughs> The idea of actually having to change anything yeah. feels absolutely crazy to yeah, right so now. Yeah, so you want to go... And not because go, it feels go, good, go, because it's just so much to think about already. So you're going to go brake balance, which is on red one, uh, minus one. Okay, right, so, so you it's to, on brake balance look, already. Now you no. look at the stick. Brake balance, <laughs> my, yeah. minus one. Yeah, it's one clip, that's it, yeah. And then I'm in, have I done yeah, it? Yeah, you've done it, I yeah. slowed down so much yeah. when I did that, that's yeah. unbelievable. You were, and you were looking at the steering wheel for like... You've, yeah, not, you've, you've got, just got to trust it's done. You would have had about 15 cars overtake you. <laughs> <laughs> you can use the pit lane. Boost window fun. open. What is that? Is that attack So phase? you can clear that. So, that is, so that's going to be... Oh, should have broke that. Yeah, that. see, look, just by looking at that, <laughs> you've ended up having... I missed my braking zone by about 50 metres. Yeah. Oh, that's rubbish. Come on, Saunders. <laughs> so then in the race, for example, let's say you just had a safety car, um, the race will basically extend, so you might have to like go plus one lap. So okay. I believe laps is on green two. So um, I've got so to you go to green two plus one. Green yeah. to laps. Yes. Plus one. Yes, that's it. Oh wow. And, and, then, I mean... and then you should have 20, what have you got? 28 on dash, yeah. You know, the idea of thinking you just have to do it almost subconsciously. You can't be thinking about looking down or you can't really looking look where at you're the pressing. Wheel, no. So okay. now that map's gone, you can press that green button to like wake it back up again and then go One, seven. Two, three, clicks. four, five, six, seven. Yeah. I didn't look. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm also going about four mile an hour. Yeah. Yeah, do attack mode now. Attack mode, right. So that's, I've got to press it within so five seconds of going through the zone, right? Yeah, yeah. you've got to press it five seconds before you start getting right. to the first attack loop. Mode is yeah, this it's one that here. one there. Yeah, exactly. So press it near now. Here. About there, and then through there. You... Did I, did I miss the first one? Beeps. Yeah, I I heard, you missed one. Yeah. Oh, I heard one beep. You heard one beep, so yeah. I got so one you went three, too shallow, so yeah. The, uh, the so try, try and get attack mode again. Okay, yeah. Quite had to look at the wheel again. So yeah. Attack mode. I missed it, it didn't beep. No, I think you're all right, you'll be all right there. Oh. Yes, three beeps. Yes, yeah, so there you go then. I'm in. You're in, now you've got more power and more spinning. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, let's see how that power comes into play on the straight. Yeah. Too much, <laughs> too much. Ah! Uh-oh. I'm struggling with that. And I've just moment. really used some, wasted some attack mode there. Yep. And the car, and yeah, maybe and another six car. Chassis. I know this video will go out and people will be like, Saunders is rubbish in the simulator, even though he's not a racing driver. Fine, I'll take it. But people say that to you guys, you know, they give yeah. you a hard time when you've had a tough yeah. race and you know, they're not, it's not an easy task. No, I think, I mean, the only point I'll make is, you know, Formula E has been one of the only categories in the world that has all professional drivers. You know, the big manufacturers willing to pay those drivers to represent them so and and it's not just about being fast um, uh, you see you know drivers who are 40 years old in Formula e because the experience of this kind of thing can can be such a big help as well so yeah cognitively there's more to do as a driver in Formula e than I would say quite a lot of other categories now, I've
I've experienced it to a very small degree, mind, but yeah, I can see now I, I am going to take away from this day uh, a different perspective and it maybe give you guys a little bit more slack. Yeah, when I, it think, comes to post -session. I, I think, yeah, people are, people are very jump to, very quick to, to jump to conclusions and criticise. I think what you said is sums up well, just sometimes we need, we need to cut some slack, yeah. Yeah, and the steering wheel is just one of those very unique challenges that comes with motorsport, but especially with Formula, Formula E. e. Absolutely.